So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Heaven's Field, day 15. Bibi the Tyrant has announced her intentions to mute all of the lurkers. So, if you're watching this on the VOD, you'd better you'd better comment or you're going to be permanently muted. And if you're in chat, apparently you've got to, you've got to post. But, you know, it's just an AI. Maybe she'll miss you. How, how scared are you of artificial intelligences? Are you trying to, uh, are you trying to, uh, cozy up with your inevitable machine overlords? <laughs> it mutes them, obviously. <laughs> Well, you see, you see, it's like muting muting lurkers is like uh, is like disenfranchising minorities. They already struggle to, uh, they already don't part actively participate, and now you're just intentionally stopping them from doing it. So yeah, it's mean. You're just bullying them. Although in in theory, there's a there's more lurkers than there are active people at any given time. In theory. I don't know if that actually holds true. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case they decide to stop lurking for five minutes. On the other hand, this might be this might be a trick by BB. Remember, maybe she can't actually see you unless you're, you're posting. And by posting and indicating your presence. Uh, you can. You are now a target of harassment. You're going to be abducted to the moon, and forced to participate in a holy grail war with only one survivor. We emerge into a clearing. All right, we're approaching Ilya's castle. This time, this time we have uh, Kotomine with us, so it hopefully doesn't go too bad. An empty circular space within the vast forest. The castle I saw through Ilya's eyes is standing there, just like I remembered. There's no one around. It's strange that there's no watch anywhere, but I can't back out, even if this is a trap. Even if they don't know we're here, it'll be suicidal to go in from the front door. Are you sure they won't just detect you anyway? It might be useless, but I have to do everything I can. I like how Kota Mina's first thought is, we'll sneak in via the sewers, and he's like, they're not that dumb. <laughs> they're not that dumb, surely. Yeah, how do you tell where Ilya is? The priest looks at the castle, pondering. He narrows his eyes as if trying to look through the wall, staring at each window in turn. Kotomine actually thinking about what the fuck's going on. He's like, shit. Like, if we're gonna get detected, we need to get in and out fucking fast. Let's find where she is before we go in the castle. Smart man. He's actually being useful in this route, weirdly enough. In all the other routes, he, he kind of just info dumps at you and then tr things go poorly. In this one, he's actually providing some useful tactical advice. He's using he's using his <laughs> he's using his head, the one Shiro never uses. You know we're looking for Ilya, right? <laughs> We're looking for the one who's the same physical size as uh, Sit and I. As the observer, he's connected to the Grail. Plus, he has his contract too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't think it, observer was actually an official title though, because they they added observer in after the after the first Grail War and all the bloodshed and disaster, right? Which means it's probably not part of the ritual. Or at least wasn't originally. That's what I would have thought. Since the, that, that's what the information we're given says. Uh, that after 
causing disasters, they're like, we need observers and called in the church. Uh, official, on, in an official case, at least. But yeah, he does have his mission. He does have his missions, and he's actually a competent mage. Unlike Shiro, despite Kotomine, you know, not looking like a wizard because he's a priest, he is actually a competent mage. He got trained by Rin's father, and Rin's father said he officially, you know, he's officially graduated and become a his own mage. So he's actually a pretty, he's actually a pretty good wizard. That's why people call him the fake priest. Not only because he maybe doesn't believe in God or anything he preaches and is pretty fucking evil, but he's also also a wizard and wizards in this universe uh, or priests in this universe are supposed to hate any form of magecraft or witchcraft. Happy voice. Seems they really do think lightly of us. Really. I've never heard this tone from him before, so I doubt my eyes for ears for a second. なんか見つけたのか見つけたとも時に一つ尋ねるが登山の経験はあるかね宮城まさかあんたこれしかなびスケーリングだ垂直だがオーバーハングはなく凹凸は十分にあるこの壁なら足場は確保できる道具はなく
Just as the deep sea is a sanctuary that humans cannot violate, high places are also a sacred place. There's not enough oxygen above the altitude of 6,000 meters, and untrained people cannot stay there for more than a few hours. Nausea, dizziness, brain edema from lack of oxygen, and finally, death. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was too heavy on my keys. Damn. This is a hell that gets worse the higher you go. Thankfully, we're not climbing 6,000 meters. And also, apparently, I was resting my hand on the keys too hard. I thought it was just the spacebar that moved us forward. All right. Intense cold, your bare skin would freeze, and even a slight scratch would turn into necrosis. Climbing is done in such extreme environments. Compared to that, merely climbing a wall is hardly impossible. Shiro being a random mage build with dex, strength, etc. Because this is his first playthrough, he basically just puts points in random stats. He's also got a lot of stat. He's also got a lot of endurance. Don't forget that. He's he's put a lot of points in endurance and constitution. <laughs> he decided to use yeah his ng plus build where he's like ninety nine in all stats. <laughs> It's, but still, it's still hard. I can only use the tips of my fingers. I have to put my weight there and support my body using a small foothold. I can't keep up with him unless I've trained every inch of my body. Oh, wait, we actually missed dialogue from Kotomine. He says, uh, hold, hold on, she moved? I thought it was above, but it's actually below us. Emiya, go down to the third floor window and go inside. Hey, are you crazy? I'm not a spider, so I can't do such a thing. Kotomine, there's a window. How do I get inside? I don't care. Break it. You fraud. If it was going to be like this, it would have been so much easier if we'd gone inside using that tree. Fate souls. I jump into the castle. I break the window and jump in using the same motion. How did you generate any momentum to do that, Shiro? Ah, whatever. I grab the wall with both hands, swing my body at the window, and kick my way in. Have you ever, like, have you ever hit a window? Like... I, I wouldn't- I, you can't accidentally just fall through a window. Like, I assume they have decent, like, double-paned windows. There's actually snow in winter, so they uh, they certainly have d at least double-paned windows on an expensive castle like this, right? That would be fucking hard to just walk in- walk through- like, just bump through. You need a lot of force to do that. Anyway, movie- movie logic, right? You, everyone can jump through windows if it's important. If it's important enough, everyone can get through a window easy. So, we grab the wall with both hands, swing our body at the window, and kick our way in. No big deal. Yeah, he might be running the He might be running a luck build. He might be running a luck build. Actually, I have a I have a nice luck build for Dark Souls 3 using that uh, the literally the one sword in the game that has innate luck scaling. Fun times. I believe that's the one you get from uh, your your wife, waifu slash husbando. Uh, the one you can uh, quote unquote marry. Fun times. I roll across the expensive looking carpet. My body was falling when I swung my legs. If I'd kicked out a bit later, I would have hit the wall and landed back first on the ground. Yeah, he was literally swinging and falling. Shit, really? <laughs> I think it would have made more sense if Kotomine used magic to explode the windows, but anyway. Better drops are totally making deals. Yeah, you'd die if you fell on your head from the third floor. Yep, pretty much. It's dangerous to kick into a window and roll while scattering glass shards, but it's no worse than expected. The instant I raise my head, all trifling matters escape my mind. Idea. I forget I'm in anime ter territory. I recall what happened in the yard. Ilya told me goodbye with a false smile. No, Kotomine knew where Ilya was. That's why he said go into the third floor instead of the fourth floor they were aiming for. A cold voice. 
Ilya puts on a cold face. I'm used to it. I'm used to seeing that face on her, but... Did we just slap her and call her an idiot? I slap her across the cheek, unable to forgive her. Apparently we did. I, I, we, there's color in Ilya's cheeks, but it's for the, all the wrong reasons. I don't like this. Sorry, Ilya. But we can't let you die. Look at that. She's, she's a bad girl. I'm happy to be able to see her, but I'm really angry. Nope. No right to complain because it's her role. Mm, I don't think Shiro cares about that. He's pretty selfish. イリアがどんなに強がって、どんなに平気な振りをしていても騙されないからな。イリアが少しでも嫌がっている限り、絶対に連れて帰ってやる。強がってるって何よ。私は嫌だなんて思ってないわ。この体は聖杯として作られた。Uh, yeah, and he... what? This is Gilgamesh, so he probably dies to, like, random bosses because he forgets he's sometimes on N NG plus 7. <laughs> he's like, oops. Oops. Oh, that boss one-shots you. Oops. Like, ah, oh, died to curse damage. Forgot. Wasn't immune to that. I'm not sure if that counts as a bluff, but alright. Don't sacrifice your life for someone else. Speaking of people who are all about sacrificing their life for someone else, this is like uh, this is like the pot calling the kettle black. We got Ilya making a sacrifice for Shiro, Sakura making sacrifices for Shiro, Shiro making sacrifices for Ilya, Shiro making sacrifice for Sakura. They're all in a competition to sacrifice their lives for each other. Herc has no intelligence or magical stats. Who are randomly getting killed via invasion. Yeah, everyone else is just like, oh yeah, the game wasn't too bad. Ku's like, holy shit, are you kidding? I've been invaded like 400 times. There's, al there's always that one person, you know, 10 people play the game. And they're like, yeah, I got invaded a couple times. Then one person's like, I swear it's every single, every other minute. She looks away. She bites her lip and... That many invasions? Jesus. Like, one invasion point there. Murmurs something I can't hear. いいわ。仮に私が嫌がってるとしても、それがどうだって言うの。私たちじゃ桜には勝てないし、逃げられない。私をこの城から連れ出すことは不可能よ。her red eyes reject me, telling me to go back. I 
Well guys, it seems we have a very difficult and complicated question. What do we do? We can uh, bring Ilya back, bring Ilya back, or bring Ilya back. I'm not quite sure what to pick. I could, I clearly need some uh, user input here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with number three. Like, I kind of like number three. It looks like the best one. Maybe, maybe the text is different. <laughs> okay, okay. In, in Hollow Ataraxia, there is a question. I kid you not, in a trivia minigame. In a trivia minigame that asks for the price in yen of all of Archer's fishing equipment. No, it's not put in text anywhere in the game. You actually have to look up the MSRP of all the equipment. Assuming you wrote down the equipment that he copied from the one line of dialogue where he says he got, he's got this fishing rod and this bait and this box. It actually asks you that. It's a real question. I was like, I was like, uh, uh, I'm gonna Google this shit. Yeah, they, they actually do have some questions that are so absurd. You're just like, is that a real question? Is that a, is that a real question? <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't part, it wasn't required to complete the game but it was pretty freaking hilarious i was doing like side stuff i was doing side content and it it was it gave you this quiz mini game and it started out hilariously easy and then it had ultra hard mode and ultra hard mode was actually legitimately stupid because it had questions like that it had like questions like that where you were just like what this actually requires end of game research it's never been said anywhere in the game <laughs> and like I looked up a guide and it's like, yeah, these questions can't be answered simply by reading the content in the game or knowing stuff about the game, like the release date or you know, how many copies sold in the first six months. When's Hollow Red I'm probably not going to read Hollow Red Orexia for a while. I read it uh, before I started streaming last year. So we probably won't go through it for a while. I don't even need to think about it. There's no alternative in my mind. It's also a super chill game. I have I have a lot of visual novels I want to get through, so rereads are pretty low on my priority. If there's like crazy demand for Hollow Ataraxia, I might go back and do it, but There were three choices. And we picked one. It was clearly the right one. We didn't even need to think about it. As he said, he didn't need to think about it, so why'd we take so long? Ilya's just gonna stare at me in surprise now. I take her hand. Like that confidence. I pull her small, light body and start to walk. Ilya starts to walk without resisting. She happily closes her hand over mine. And then, Kotomine jumps in through the window I broke. Ilya pulls her hand from mine and stands on guard. Yeah, he's super evil, but we don't care right now. <laughs> he moves in an instant. Kotomine grabs Ilya's arm and jumps out the window without any hesitation. Kotomine proving he's a badass. You're like, uh, actually, no, no, you. You knew he is kind of like competent at magic, but now, now you're like, oh wait, he's actually not terrible. <laughs> I dash to the window. Kutomine has already landed. He jumped three stories straight down. Ilya is in his arms. At once, she shakes off his grip and slaps his face. She hit him so hard, I can hear it from up here. 
There's no time to hesitate. I can manage this height if I land properly. I charge as much magical energy as I can into my feet. I can't strengthen my own body, but this should soften the landing. Or not. Or not. Yep. No big deal, just jump out third floor of a... They didn't change the graphic, but imagine jumping out like... Imagine jumping out on the third row of windows here. Oh my god. There's a good chance you die from that. I jump down 20 meters and roll the instant I hit the ground. It's only the third floor, but the third floor of a castle is very high up. Yeah, these are like fucking tall floors, man. They're like 10, 12 feet floors, easy. Well, he's at 20 meters, so they're like... Probably like 5 meters just for that ground there. Anyway, in a normal house, it'd be somewhere around the 8th story. 8 stories! What the fuck? Dude! You don't jump out of an 8th story window and roll it! You crazy bastard! You don't jump out an 8th story window and just be like, yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll uh, roll the landing, no big deal. And he's landing onto, like, dirt. There's, like, no padding. You have stuff to take care of, a ple pleasant suffering, and see you in your dreams, or rather your room, while you sleep. Good night, BB Chan. But nice seeing you. Nice having you. Nice having you around. See you later. My feet are so numb, I can't even stand. But I'm lucky it's grassy here. If this were asphalt, I would have broken my legs. Then I'd never be able to escape. Yeah, exactly. That was a. Yeah, that was crazy, bro. Don't do that again. <laughs> are you suicidal? <laughs> Jumping from that height? Koto, the two stare at me. Even Koto Mina is impressed. Setting Ilya aside for the moment, Kotumini's comment makes me forget about the pain. さっきな。お前が飛び降りたから、アスルしかなかったんだよ。俺だってこんなのは二度とごめんだ。普通足折れてるし、飛び降りた瞬間なんて、めまいで失神しかけたんだからな。だが5体満足ではないか。文句を言
That roar was definitely a signal fire for the hunt, telling us the most fearsome hound has been unleashed. It's like a death sentence placed upon a fleeing prisoner by an honorable yet ruthless lord. This oh, guy. Cut, cut. My mind shifts it to full alert. Berserker. I hear the name that embodies danger and every ounce of composure is squeezed from my body. <laughs> Kotemine leads the way to the castle gate. I take Ilya's hand and start running. We can't be holding back now. If that mad warrior is after us, the only way for us to survive is to run with all our might for the three... for whole... for the whole three hours to the forest edge. Yeah, you're gonna sprint for three hours straight? With, like, someone in the... It's hard to breathe, yeah. With Ilya as well? Good luck. Alright. A darkness I can't ignore no matter what is overtaking us. Breathe. Yeah, it sure is hard to breathe. You're, like, sprinting for your life now. You got a three-hour run ahead of you? I run through the forest. I can't, can't even walk for more than ten minutes. This guy's got a... This, yeah, he had to walk three hours? Climb up, climb up eight stories? Make a landing from that height, and then he fucking has to run the three hour walk back. I run through the forest. I still don't see anything behind us. All I hear is the sound of raging wind. The pursuer is not a hound, but a huge monster. As he cannot slip between trees like us, he instead follows by knocking aside whatever blocks his path. It feels like we're being chased by one of those heavy drills used for digging tunnels. It's like there's a black wall tearing down, bearing down to engulf us. <laughs> Don't forget, Ilya is shorter than him. Though so she's like four feet, she can't go that, she can't run that fast. I slow down to Ilya's pace. Yeah, yeah, this is bad. The enemy's speed and ours are about the same. He'll catch up to us in a minute if I try to run while carrying Ilya. What should I do? Should I carry a Ilya and run, or, or will I fight that monster? I can't even match Assassin! Fight one-on-one -on -one against the strongest servant with his borrowed sword? No. Stop. Please don't make me. There's no way in the world I can beat that monster. I'll die if I stop. He'll definitely kill me. The moment I face him, my body will be sliced in half, my torso crushed by strength like a machine, all while I'm still conscious and- <laughs> We both turn around. I don't even have time to be surprised. Kotomine walks over to us, picks Ilya up, and starts running. Forgot how small she is. He's fast! Otomine has a good build. With his height, he should be able to easily carry Ilya and run. But we're in a forest. Even though the ground is uneven, trees are scattered everywhere and his arms are full, he's not slowing down. Kotomine, an absolute unit, yeah. I run full speed after him. We're at equal speed now. Kotomine is carrying Ilya while I'm running without any shackles. In a forest where we, we might trip at any moment, we run at a pace of 100 meters per 7 seconds. Wait up, wait up, wait up. That's actually insanely fast, isn't it? That's actually really fast, right?
What the fuck? That's insanely fast. I literally googled high school 100 meter record, and the first result is... Nine, it says uh, 9.98 seconds. At a recent track meet in, in Houston, a high school student by the name of someone showed everyone how what a fast runner looks like as this teenager set a new world record by running 100 meters in 10 seconds. In less than 10 seconds. Yep. That is literally the fastest high schooler a high schooler has ever run. At least in uh, North America. There might be something like not recorded in the in uh, anywhere else, but at least in the states or in Texas, that's the fastest they got for 100 meters. So, seven, 100 meters per 7 seconds is insanely fast for someone Shiro's age. It's, I know it's not the world record though. Usain Bolt's better, but Usain Bolt also doesn't run for hours uh, way faster. Uh. Wait, what? The 100 meter record? Wait, what? It's actually 9.5. It's actually 9.5. This number, the number they gave is completely off unless they're both using magic. Although Shiro is super, it's kind of enhanced by uh, Archer's body. I don't know if he can actually beat Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Usain Bolt holds the world record for fastest 100 meters with a running start at 8.7. This was achieved in a 150 meter race during the Great City Games in Manchester in May 17th of May 2009. He also ran 963, 969, 9.72, 9.76, 9.77, 9.79, 9.8. Okay, basically the fastest he Usain Bolt's ever done was with a 50 meter running start. And he got 8.7. This is this is like just past superhuman. This is just slightly superhuman. Mind you, mind you, Usain Bolt's running because he wants to win. Shiro is literally running because if he stops running for two seconds, he dies. And uh, Ikota Mina at least has magic on his side. Still, I didn't think that was a big number until... I didn't think that was insanely fast until... <laughs> I realized that's the world speed record. <laughs> oh, that's insanely fast. All right. I knew it was fast, but I didn't think it was like absurdly fast. I thought it was like an average number or like an above average number, but they're actually moving really fast. Wait, did that number also have... Oh, uh, hold up. If we just... If we just do some basic math, that's actually pretty fast, right? Uh, that's like 100 meters for 7 seconds, so if we do like 7 times 10, it's like 70 seconds. Out of like... That's like seven, 70 seconds uh, for a kilometer. That's like just over a minute, so they're moving at like... They're moving at like 55 kilo... They're moving at like 55 kilometers an hour or something, right? Uh... If we did like uh, fifty-five thousand divide, divided by like sixty for minutes divided by sixty for seconds times uh, seventy seconds, yeah, it's actually about fifty. It's about fifty k kph. Uh, yeah, about fifty. About fifty kilometers an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they do it. Yeah, it's 70 seconds. Uh, like. Because we can just do like, uh, so they're doing, oh, I should do this math properly, but it's really fast because they're doing, uh, it's seven seconds. So if I take a hundred divided by seven and then multiply it by 60 for each second times 60 for each minute. Uh, divided by a thousand. Yeah, they're moving at 51 kilometers an hour. They're legitimately... <laughs> that's, that's insanely fast. <laughs> Alright. 
This isn't... Yeah, my heart's beating rapidly. This isn't normal. Yeah, definitely a little bit. You're running too quick. Hey, Shiro noticed he's running too quickly. This isn't normal. I'm running too quickly. He's noticed it. That's interesting. It's not possible for a human to run at almost 50 kilometers per hour through this terrain. I like how they've noted that. We were doing math thinking, wow. Uh, we were think I'm doing math thinking, wow, Nazi really screwed up here. And it turns out he act it actually is kind of true. All right. Let's see, let's see if they elaborate on it. My left arm throbs. It feels like my left arm expanded beneath the claw. This is probably what Ilya was talking about. Archer's battle experience isn't the only thing flowing into me. His physical abilities are flowing into me now. An overdose of strength-enhancing drugs. The poison seeps into my body, letting me demonstrate abilities beyond my limits. Yeah, beyond human limits too, but to be fair, Archer is literally a, a spirit, so... Is a spirit and is insanely strong, so... A servant can run 50 kilometers an hour, no problem. Actually, unfortunately it wasn't actually in the game, but in the, in the first movie we do in fact see a servant outrun a car. On the highway, no less. Or at least what I think was a, was a highway. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Even if this may be contamination too great for a Geiger counter to measure, I can appreciate it for now. We're not dead, but Kotomine is different. I don't sense any usage of magic or leak of magical energy. How the hell is he so fast? It's unbelievable, but he's running with Ilya in his arms without any magical assistance? Oi, <laughs> Kotomine plainly talks. He's sprinting this fast and he's just ra he's just talking. Yeah, no big deal. We're, we're just booking it. I don't know why he's talking about this with such disinterest, but. Yeah, just carry on a conversation like this. No big deal. It all depends on our cardio? A voice filled with hostility. Before I'm able to tell what he means. My left arm writhes. We got, we got company. I see a white skull. Assassin slips through the trees behind, beside us, as if laughing at our attempts to escape. By the time I realize how much trouble we're in, it's already too late. On the other side of the trees is Assassin, raising his left arm over his head and... Someone parries before it can pierce my skull. I gasp. There's only one person that can do such a thing. Otomine, still carrying Ilya, parried the attack that was fired without any indication. Now, now he's running. He's running at like car speed, like normal, you know, normal city car speeds. While parrying, uh, throwing daggers, and carrying someone. Ah, uh, yeah, it's perfect time for quips. Why does he never show up when your hands are free? Kotomine slows down. The priest frowns and glares at the black assassin keeping pace with us. <laughs> <laughs> You're starting to think Kotomine is slightly more than, than human. <laughs> he is one of the best priests out there. At least in terms of physical abilities. Kotomine stops and lets Ilya down. <laughs> Ily Ilya's face, she's just like, what am I watching? I pull the bewildered girl towards me. At the same time, three daggers are fired like bullets. I doubt my eyes. Assassin fired three sword flashes. The priest easily knocked them all aside. Kotomine being an 
absolute Chad here. But it's not over. Berserker! <sighs> that was close. They'll catch up to us if we slow down here. This is no time to be indecisive. I have to go ahead with Ilya. This is this is quite the intense scene. I'm liking this. The way they describe it, it's the they got their pacing right, man. They got the pacing right for this. So I hold Ilya in my arms. I can't run as fast as Kotomide, but it's this is still faster than having your run with me. I turn my back to the priest. The dark roar is coming from another part of the forest. It's surely coming closer while destroying everything in its path. I have nothing to say to Kotomine. Yeah, nothing at all. He's being a complete badass, though. Thrusting him with my back and running with all speed will be my best reply. And right when I'm about to start off. <laughs> if I heard he can fight assassin. Assassin is objectively in uh, in actual Holy Grail Wars, Assassin is object well, for the most part, objectively weaker than Berserker. As Berserker's Berserker's drawback to being OP is typically that he eats mana like nobody's business. That's his downside. He's just better than everyone else. Oh wait. The mindlessness and the eating mana like nobody's business are his downsides. He's actually physically stronger than most people, right? Don't kill the person if the one you saved is a woman. After you die in front of you, he's gonna hit pretty, will hit pretty hard. The priest says something strange, his voice heavy with self-derision. I nod and start off. Their shadows recede into the distance. His back is so far away. I have a bad feeling. I think we will never see each other alive again. It's a bit abrupt. But driving away evil spirits is not a priest's duty. A priest preaches about the teachings of God, but doesn't drive away evil spirits. Their God is one and absolute, supreme and all-knowing, a spirit that created the perfect world. Such a God would never allow evil to disgrace the world that he created. But evil still exists, corrupting men and tainting the world. God's world is being desecrated by something that should not exist. This is how they define the contradiction. That even the evil that threatens mankind is a necessary part of the world. It is something worthy of love. Alright then. Alright then. In this regard, evil is a messenger from heaven. If what brings out the goodness of men is holy, it follows that what brings out the malice of men is evil. They are both angels sent by God. As one who teaches the word of God, the priest has no right to eliminate them. Well, that, that's one way, that's one philosophy for uh, priests, I guess. All, all spirits are inherently uh, messengers of God, and that's not worth interfering with, but all right. Evil does exist, corrupting men and tainting the earth, producing gruesome tragedies, surpassing human knowledge, yeah. At times, the trials from heaven made people realize how powerless God is. The inhuman deeds of the evil caused people to desire for miracles from the great God. Consequently, an exception was created. Apostles, humans that carry out the will of God instead of spreading his word. Trials that should be observed. Heresy that should be denied. People who possess what should not exist, the Eighth Sacrament. Executors, destroyers of evil devised by the 120 cardinals were born. Alright, we're getting executors back. Backstory, good shit. They drive away darkness, purging all things that are not part of God's teachings. They hunt down that which doesn't exist in the doctrine, so they're not bound by the doctrine. 
their immortality is their, their their immorality is forgiven. There's only one thing they must protect: the great name of God. For this purpose, they will destroy the evil that God created. That is the only difference between them and the exorcists. Yeah. And here we learn he's not just your average priest, he's actually an executor. And thus, he is the best the church has to offer. One of, at least. The White Skull laughs. The priest Kotomine Kire doesn't answer but checks his weapons. Five black keys on each side and a command spell on his right arm, unused since the last war. These armaments are more than sufficient against a low-ranking spirit. But he cannot kill a servant, even if he hits every one of his weapons. Even if he may be nameless, Assassin is a heroic spirit. He can't possibly defeat a heroic spirit unless he has a weapon of the scripture scale that the selected agents carry. Hey, Shadow, how's it going? Kirei K Kotomine Kire and Assassin are facing off right now. Pretty badass. They had a... Epic. We had the uh, sprinting battle through the forest. Where Kirei flexes on everyone. The priest doesn't move. He stares at the skull that lurks between the trees, listening to the sounds in the forest. Rustling leaves. The breath under the mask. The sound of slowly melting flesh. And the mad warrior crashing into the distance. Cursed arm. He talks while staring at the skull. So <laughs> わしの気合に気づいておったが綺麗よ。そこまでわかっていながら足を止めるとは何事じゃ。以前のお主ならば小僧を巻きにしても逃げ切ろう。だというのに自らお取りになるなど出しからの善行。よもや情に捕らされた
The hostility disappears. The white skull melts into the forest without trace. The blades run. The sword held by the priest and the daggers flung by assassin clash. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh echoes. The holy man who wards off evil meets Malak Almaft, knowing it's impossible to win. Oh, so that's actually his name, Malak Almaft. Cool. Didn't actually know that one. I don't know if that's a title, though. <laughs> But if that's his true name, that's pretty cool. I run through the forest with Ilya in my arms. I can't turn back. It feels like a black wall would be behind me if I turn back, which would kill my spirit to escape alive. I don't have energy to waste on that. He'll catch up to us if my resolve wavers. He'll catch up and kill us both. It feels like my feet will tear off. Ilya may be light, but carrying someone still slows me down. Making matters worse, the forest isn't the best place to run in. Each step nearly causes me to trip. Faster, 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 faster! He'll catch up to us unless I run faster. The presence behind me is getting closer by the second. I like the uh, I like the earlier lead in to Assassin's Fight. That this this is nice. We go back to the tension where we had like some calm tension building between Assassin. And uh, Kotomine, and presumably uh, Zoken, who's watching that fight. Now we go back to this nice fast-paced thing. Yeah, now we're back to Shiro running. Kotomine is kind of clashing with Assassin. It's a good place to cut, because you want to know what happens next, and then you're like, oh right, right, Shiro's, Shiro's fucking booking it, being chased by Berserker. What's happening next? This is no time to be moving this slowly. I have to run faster. Run fast like Kotomine and run away with Ilya. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good scene cut. They split the action up nicely. Things still... Things uh, continue to be interesting. Alright. My heart feels like it's about to explode. It's painful. I can't breathe. The muscles in my legs are about to tear apart and my bones are screaming to break. <laughs> It's painful. How long have I run for? I'm running frantically through the forest with Ilya in my arms. I've covered five kilometers already. Then again, I'm so short of breath I can't think, so it might have been twice that. I ran full speed without slowing down. That doesn't sound good. It sounds closer than before, but it won't go away. I'm running full speed, my heart and muscles are about to stop. And yet the presence behind me is getting larger. Oh, he, he, he can't make it. He's not fast enough. <laughs> Shit, that's not good. Ilya is heavy. Oxygen is heavy. My legs are heavy. Death is heavy. Yeah, death is a little bit heavy. I'll die if he catches up to me. Pretty much. I'm burdened with the fear of being killed in a single blow. <laughs> You got Achilles and John Archer to level 90. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's always frustrating when you got servants who aren't max leveled in Grand Order. And we don't even get to see Ilya's text. I mentally kick myself before I can falter. Run. Just don't think and keep running. So what if my legs are about to rip off? What's the point in worrying? Think about it when it actually happens. For now, I just need to get out of the forest as quickly as possible. Fill my chest with gasoline, turn the key and ignite the engine that's stalling with fear. Keep the gear at the top and remove the brakes. <laughs> run, run, run. Run to shake the uneasiness from my back. Run to ignore the fear behind me. Nice, nice, nice. Sounds like things are going well. Run so I won't think negative thoughts.
Who to say? Shut up. Don't yell in my ear. My eardrums are just about to burst because of my breathing. I can't spare the effort to listen to your loud book. What do you think I'm doing, Ilya? Not running? Exactly, right? It's like... Like, yeah, he's he's running full tail. I think I think she's worried about him st slowing down or something. Let's find it. <laughs> Ilya screams in my arms. My mind reacts to her frantic warning before my body does. I stop. My feet slide to a halt in the dirt, and I put Ilya down on the ground. Twice. I readied the sword I had on my wrist and create a magic circuit at the speed of 200 miles per hour. Oh. Nothing comes to mind. Analysis of creation concept? Analysis of battle structure? Modification of creation concept? Reinforcement of basic structure? In an instant, I manufacture everything without even thinking about it. I resist the impact with all my strength. The whirlwind comes from the side. The pursuer has attacked us from the side, smashing all the trees in the way, his way. He just blows through all the trees and takes a swing at us in the same motion. I'm sent flying. All it took was one blow. The black key, which I strengthened to be as strong as diamond, is bent like melted candy. The impact goes through the sword into my body, permeating damage from the tip of my head to my toes. I guess it's a good thing that- I guess it's a good fucking thing that Ilya was yelling at us, because we might have just been decapitated while running if she hadn't screamed in our ear. I'm flying. Kiara, Gil, Mordred, and Fran. Gotta close it again in the next bond. Nice, nice. Yeah, my, my coup is almost at 10. Everyone else is a bit- is a ways out. The attack I made with all my might was deflected like nothing. I'm no match against him. I'm no match against him. Emi Ashiro isn't allowed to even stop that monster. My body's floating in the air. No, I'm, I'm flying. I'm like a thrown lance hurled dozens of meters by the impact. John Archer's are close to 10. Yeah, John Archer is really good for looping. She's a really good AoE Archer. I might fly back all the way to the castle. Are you serious? That's how much stronger he is. Escape is impossible. 256k? Isn't that like half of the? Is that isn't that like most of the bond level? Oh, it might be half. Time stopped. I'm still flying, and I should die when I fall to the ground. Having seen the difference in our power, I accept my fate. But yeah, it's halfish. Okay. I see Ilya crying in disbelief with the black monster in front of her. I frantically reach out. I stop my flying body by hitting myself against a tree. It feels like I've been hit in the back with a hammer. My heart, already pushed to the point of bursting, expands still further. It cries in pain as though there's a crack running through it. Better than one million ish bond from bond 10 to bond 11. It's only a million. You get over it soon enough. I can only draw a single breath. I need oxygen, but it feels like I'll explode if I take another. But my body moves. That single breath gives me the strength to run. I use all of my magic circuit to move my muscles and... Entranced, Ilya doesn't move. She just calls out in a weak voice, trying to deny the unrecognizable figure before her. What? Oh, he actually does get like totally messed up visually. Oh, damn. Damn, he actually does get totally messed up. I was, I was not certain that, uh, I was really questioning what the hell they did with him in the movie. Uh, they actually changed him to look vaguely like this. It was like a weird, it was like a weird Shadow Servant style thing where he had like bright red skin, but there was shadows covering it, uh, burning off of him like a Shadow Servant from Grand Order. And I thought, I was like, the heck did they change his appearance from the second one to the third one in such a dumb way? 
Whereas like Saber Alter looks really clean and cool. This is like completely messed up, but apparently it's actually what he looks like. Shit. Never mind, I'm sorry. They went for the book accuracy plan. Alright. That's the black enemy's true identity. Otomine said his eyes can't see. He's right, but he's not accurate. Everyone's favorite <laughs> He's right, but he's not right. He's right, but he's not accurate. The servant has no eyes, nose, or mouth. His glowing red eyes are there to admit hostility. His body is covered by the black mud, and the wound he received from Saber is left alone. That's something completely different. Engulfed in the mud, he's a monster who can only destroy. He doesn't even see who he's attacking. The mad warrior can't recognize Ilya's figure, let alone mine. He raises his axe sword against the living thing in front of him. You knew they'd do that. You knew they'd do that. Oh my god, it hurts, but you know you knew they'd do that. The priest is about to end his life. Kotumine Kire leans against a wall, staring at the white skull. His outfit is slashed up. He's breathing hard, with three black keys as his only remaining weapon. He started, I believe, with ten. <laughs> The old man's laugh echoes through the sky. Assassin remains silent in contrast to his talkative master. Battle is merely work for him. The dirks that go for his opponent's vital spots are also weapons to measure the strength of his opponent. He measures his opponent's mobility with the first dagger. He measures his opponent's action principles with the second. He always keeps seven meters between him and the opponent. He maintains a distance at which only projectile weapons are useful, and measures his opponent's skill. If he cannot kill his opponent in one blow, he will force his opponent to a place where he can. He'll drive them into a corner by cutting their limbs and tiring their bodies. For Assassin, the daggers are merely preparation for his fatal attack. He uses them to analyze his target's skill, creates the perfect opportunity, and smashes his enemy with his evil arm. Well, there, there you go. Assassin isn't necessarily trying to kill you, merely wear you down with dagger throws. It's just a chore for Assassin, bringing him no joy. It's a boring chore, but the priest is better prey than he expected. He's used at least 20 daggers already. Although he uses them to determine his opponent's skill, each one is still meant to kill. The priest has blocked them and reached this room. He dismissed the priest as a mere human, but his powers are admirable. Kira did have Hassan as a servant, so I switch. He does have experience with them. This is a very different Hassan, though. The, that was 100 faces. This is Cursed Arm. I guess in principle, he kind of knows the gist of the like core of their fighting style, I'd say, maybe. Especially because I think Cursed Arm is later in the line than... Uh, I think Cursed Arm's after 100 faces, right? Or Cursed Arm is before 100 faces, sorry. Cursed Arm's before 100 faces because... Uh, we know who a hundred faces was chosen instead of as Hassan. And that person knew Cursed Arms techniques. Nope, it's definitive. The person, the person who, uh, was chosen to be Hassan, Hassan instead of, or who was chosen to be hundred faces instead of another character, we know that character, and that character knew, uh, First Arms First Arms, uh, Noble Phantasm. Already. As it was something they knew. So, and the reason they weren't chosen was because they didn't know a, a new ability. They just knew everyone else's abilities. So, it, uh, first, Cursed Arm is one of the earlier Hassans. And thus, uh, Hunter Faces probably knows some of his abilities. I don't know if, how much he actually learned, because Kotomine probably wasn't sparring with her. But, who knows? Who knows? I haven't read Fate Zero, so... Maybe they were doing something, like practice fighting. Yeah, hundred phases should be pretty far down. But this is it. His energy drained, the priest leans against a wall and stares at Assassin. He has three hidden black keys left. The seven he threw were all dodged. <laughs> Assassin 
The skull wavers. Assassin fires the daggers without motion. Aiming for the temple, pancreas, and diaphragm. The priest challenges the lightning flashes with his black keys. There's the term called fatal attack. A move that will kill, a move that will determine victory. This is it. The three daggers are a feint. Kotamine Kire will die the instant he deflects them. Shine. The wing flaps. The cursed arm, the one-winged spear, is developed. It's an unavoidable attack. Assassin knows the priest's capabilities. He knows his prey is tired and wounded. That's why this will kill. This, the prey should prevent death from the dirks. But that will be all. Even if he saved up his energy for a counter-strike, his body is incapable of carrying it out. After repelling the three daggers, all the priest can do is jump sideways, and only three meters at that. He cannot escape the arm. Yeah, he can only move three meters, so he can't escape my arm. <laughs> uh, we're getting Lion King and at least the new servant they announced. We're also getting Ozzy for sure. I don't know what else we're going to get. Um, I'm guessing they're probably getting one new servant on top of that. I'm guessing they're at least getting one new servant on top of that. Don't know what they're getting. But it's going to be someone. The cursed arm stretches out. The priest has no fear. He's prepared for it. He knows the daggers are a feint, that the cursed arm will strike him the instant he repels the daggers, and that he has no way to avoid it. No matter what he does, he will die. And that's why. The only thing he can aim for is a double kill. The skull laughs. The cursed arm going for the heart, and the black keys cross. But there's no problem. Assassin's cursed arm is the only one that will directly hit the target. The black keys will certainly hit him, but how unfortunate. No matter what magic he puts on the sword, the black keys cannot kill Assassin. Three swords will pierce through Assassin, sticking to the tree behind him. But that's it. The priest will inflict injury, but have his heart torn out in turn. Assassin's arm does its job first. His noble phantasm, Zabanya, st sticks to the priest's chest and creates a fake heart. But he feels no solid response. The man's heart gives no reaction, as if it's empty. At that instant, the impact hits him. The three black keys hurl Assassin backward, nailing him to a tree. There are two surprises. One is that the black keys have sealed his movement. And the other is... The priest's black outfit flutters through the air. He jumps. The inhuman action is like a cannon firing. Amassing his strength and releasing it, he covers 10 meters in an instant. Up to the trees above, he instantly seizes the head of Mato Zokin, the one who has been observing the battle. It doesn't need to be said. His bodyguard is sewn to a tree by the black keys. To assassin, this is only a scratch. But the holy nails make it impossible to save the old man. Surprised? Surprised? Why challenge an enemy he knows he cannot defeat? This has always been his announced intention. You have to use Lancers or Casters, you aren't going to get bonus from this event? Uh, you might have to, I don't know off the top of my head, but... It's fine? Like... The, the, it's just bonus damage, you don't get bonus drops from taking specific servants, it's not a big deal. Final Notice Saber, so archers. Nice, nice. The priest grabs his head and drops to the ground. I didn't actually look up the notes for the 
私に委ね、私に学び、私に従え。Kill him f u l l y Yeah, I get to use Gilgamesh for my last note. Sounds good to me. 休息を歌を忘れず、祈りを忘れず、私を忘れず、私は軽く、あらゆる重みを忘れさせる。He shows no mercy. The priest smashes the old Magus' s body on the ground, crushes his bones, and slams his head against the wall. <laughs> also makes sense because、uh, we have a certain archer as the raid up servant. <laughs> Second last note is archers. I guess you will have to use lancers for a day. Or if you want to farm gold specifically. He walks, leaving a smear of blood across the stones as he goes. <laughs> なんと救いようのない男よ。未だ人並みの幸福とやらを求めているのか。そのようなもの、お主には絶対にないと理解したのではなかったか。今日は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、His body has been ground away against the stone. Imagine grinding someone's body away to just a head on stone. What the heck? Alright, that, that's like ridiculous amounts of force, but alright. Not even half of his head remains. Even with his brain pasted to the wall, the old Megus gives off his last laugh. <laughs> So, Omania, any night, Kireo, Nusha, Marina, and Oke, Kansani singing, Kamayana Dori, Nitoke, Kome, no mama, say Kansade, Aritz, Kerugaioi, Kirie, Ereison. The laughter is cut off. The shape that can't be seen by human eyes withers away. Baptismal chant. Within the systematic basis of their magic, the teachings of God are considered the greatest weapon against spirits. You saw Cena from Haganai do the butterfly? Yeah, he looks fucking cool, doesn't he? The key of providence that illuminates wandering souls. It sublimates the wish of the 500 year old Magus with great mercy. And that's Zoken. That's Zoken. <sighs> what, a, what a twist. Kotomine is not dead. And why is he not dead? Well, you see, when he said he had no heart, he actually meant it literally. <sighs> At top, he would be sixth. Man, you got too many archers, man. Sixth. Sixth archer, not even sixth five star. Sixth archers. Too bad, he's kind of cool. He's kind of cool. Admittedly, not the best servant ever, but he's fucking cool. I think, I think he rocks. Nothing else, he's got some cool animations and a really good Noble Phantasm animation. Or at least some really good lines in his Noble Phantasm. I like the first half of the animation. Time is stalled. Ilya pleads to the giant. But he doesn't even try to figure out who's talking before he swings his sword. I run. I was flung about 10 meters. The distance is nothing. I'll make it. I'll definitely make it if I run. One breath. The blood, drugs, propellant running through my body are like a jet stream, and igniting thought is like a flash of lightning. I step in. My body feels light, and time seems to stand still. I'll make it. I'll definitely make it, but even if I do. I couldn't do anything with the black key. I couldn't match him. So? 
I search, retrieve, and create it. What can beat him? What can match him? It's clear. It can be nothing less than the sword he carries. I block it. Projection succeeds as a matter of course. A crack. A crack runs through the axe sword I projected. At the same time... I'm hit with feedback that's almost strong enough to kill me, punishing me for using something forbidden. I'm flung away. My axe sword shatters beneath his second attack, and my body slides across the ground like trash. Fading. My consciousness is fading. I can't think. I can't think even if I gather up everything. My left arm revolts. My blood overflows. The restraint is still on my left arm, but my intelligence is half lost, and I feel a chill as though it'll never return. The ominous feeling will turn out to be true, and I'll start losing what I value the most. I'm enveloped by a rushing wind. I'm enveloped by an intense light. I lost it. I lost it. I lost it amidst the agony. I can't find it even though I search. My mind turns into a grain of sand within a desert. Lost to everyone. Drying up. Just drying up. Drying up. Oh, there's Elia. I'm on the ground. Man, this scene's this scene's intense too, man. I fucking love this. Great. We're getting all these intense scenes. I know it's a little bit late, and I should probably be wrapping things up soon. They usually only go about four-ish hours, but yeah, we're finishing this fucking scene. No chance we're not finishing this. I'm about ten meters away from the black giant. His red, glaring eyes are looking around as if trying to find me. <laughs> My consciousness returns. This is no time to be on the ground. And no time to be like this event. Tony, you get to use Nightingale during Christmas and she'll be a bonus earn for the event? Yeah. You'll get two Nightingales. Imagine that. Imagine having two Nightingales. My body still moves. The only external wounds are scratches from tree branches. It's just pain. My tongue tries to grasp for air. There isn't any oxygen in my body from all the running, so I want air. That's all. What's important is inside my body. I don't want to know what condition it's in, but I can still fight. Two nightingales. <laughs> Imagine having two nightingales. This one's even crazier, Jacob. Have you seen Nightingale? She's not a berserker in this one. She's an archer. She actually carries a machine. She actually carries a, a hypodermic machine gun and throws uh, healing grenades that deal damage. So, so maybe not healing. They're antibacterial or something. I forget what. Yeah, just hope you don't get injured because she's probably going to shoot you. Her NP is also fantastic if you haven't seen it. She, uh, she floats in like Mary Poppins and starts spraying with the machine gun. It's like, it's an, it's a, it's an umbrella machine gun. It's fantastic. So she holds the gun up, floats in like Mary Poppins and starts spraying bullets or I guess needles, lead. I'm not quite sure. Does she still throw beds? No, she, she, uh, empties a, she empties her purse of grenades in one animation. And I think she uses the machine gun in the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, that's her welfare. That's her welfare version. Uh, bed throwing is exclusive to the Berserker one, I believe. I, I, I don't remember. I haven't used her in a while. I grab Ilya's hand and stand up. My body's all right, but I need air. Yeah, don't get sick. Definitely don't get anything that's not curable by modern standards. I 
I have to get out of his range to regain my breath. My body's alright, but I need air. But... Ilya pulls away as if denying my assistance. Something's wrong. Berserker's right behind her. By myself? My head's not working due to oxygen deprivation, and I still can't think why Ilya might say such a thing. Ilya hangs her head. I can't think straight. I can't, so I get pissed off instead. I pull her arm. Her small body, her desire to help me with that tiny body feels scared. Sacred. I was gonna say scared, but it's sacred, alright. So what you're saying is you're probably going to get Nightingale Bond 10 too? She hits my head. I ignore her. Yeah, and I pull her close. Lilia's <laughs> eyes on Ask Me Why. She's got to be kidding me. I don't even need to explain myself. Yeah, well, you got you got a few months on that shadow. There are only a few hundred thousand out. I think you should be there. You're pretty committed to those. Would Mordred be Bond 12 by Christmas? Mm, not too sure about that. Not too sure about that. The black giant turns to us. I can think later. For now, I have to get away from him as fast as possible. We're lucky we managed to survive here. It's a bit strange. I'm pulling Ilya and running at speed far beyond Emiyashiro's capabilities. I come out into a familiar clearing. <laughs> Ilya is the one breathing hard. I'm not out of breath, maybe because my body's numb. My lungs are burning from lack of air, but I'm not breathing. I'm just like a corpse. My heart's gone on strike. <laughs> we got our first Bond Girls, Lost Belt 3? Yes, we did. It was the Lost Belt 3 release when they gave it out. Ilya's fingers are unnaturally hot. And you're not- I don't think you get another free one for a really long time. They might give one out for a special event. She's never had the energy necessary to run. Her design didn't account for ordinary human exercise, or, you know, running for her life, despite her being a master. Eh, whatever. Design. Humans by design. They screwed up a little bit. I have a headache. Knowledge I never knew flows into my mind. Thoughts are useless. I have to get away for now. The mad, senseless giant is close on our heels. I somehow widened the gap between us, but I can't hope for that speed again. My legs are shaking, and I calmly analyze that I can only run for about 10 more meters. Well, fuck. Imagine, like, imagine running, like, several kilometers and being like, I could literally only run for- move for 10 meters and then I'm gonna collapse. That's- that's very precise, but alright. He's like- he's getting superhuman strength and intelligence from his arm, so... That's fine. More hits Bond 11 and Ticker 4 wants to hit that, so it's possible. Yeah, it'd be like 7 months. You'd be at like- you'd be like another 4 months and that would be only, uh, July. It, it's probably it's more bond points I think so it might take a little bit longer but yeah that that follows not make it Ilya can't keep this up either there's nothing here for us to hide behind even if we wanted to well hiding would wouldn't accomplish much since he can't see anything 
but we're fortunate. There's a crater. It's a scar on the earth made by Saber's noble phantasm. I take Ilya's hand and jump into the crater. If he's blind, technically you should be safe in a crater, unless he stumbles into it, right? The trench usually holds two people. But on the other hand, how is he following you? If he's actually blind. I think he'll find you eventually. I lean against the dirt. Raising my head for air, I see the sky. Okay, so 1.23, so it's a little bit further. But that's not like twice as far, so you'll make it. You'll probably make it if you try just as hard. A small cutout patch of sky, as if I'm looking up from underground. I just focus on breathing. For a bit, I relax and rest my body. But it's only for an instant. The giant will not lose its prey. No matter where we run, he'll track us down and kill us. The pressed voice is from the girl beside me. Ilya's frantically hugging herself so she won't be a burden on me. This is the end. We can't run away and we can't take much more of this. I look down at my left arm. The sole weapon to overcome this situation is waiting for its release. I'll die. Otomine said this is the switch of a time bomb. I recall the pain. Using projection nearly broke me. I can't imagine what the pain would be like if I released my arm. The firing hammer is always in my head. Untying the red cloth is the same as putting a gun in my mouth and pulling the trigger. Once I remove the cloth, the firing hammer will go down. My brain will splatter out the back of my head, and everything will end there. I have to be determined. The answer is already there. I need to bring Ilya back and save Sakura. I know what that means. I have to protect Ilya, defeat the shadows, and remove it from Sakura. I wish for a miracle I can't hope to accomplish. I'm still wishing with all my might. I know it's a dream that I can't make come true, but I've never even thought about giving up. That's some serious confidence, man. And I have to go. I have to save Sakura and Ilya. It's impossible. Sakura is facing death and only destruction awaits her. Someone said it'll take a miracle to save her. That's right. Aid that's impossible with human powers. If I'm to perform a miracle that exceeds human capabilities, I'll need an appropriate compensation. I can't protect myself and someone else. If someone has to take Sakura's place in order to save her... Ground's trembling. The embodiment of the storm is closing in. She looks up in surprise. We have a lot of Sakura-like characters in the multiverse versus Ilya, though. Yeah, there's, there's only one Ilya. But then again, we don't actually have Sakura hanging around, so... Best we get is approximate save, save Ilya. It is the right choice. We've done everything we could and risked death already. But are you really willing to die here? How would Sakura react to meeting Sakura servants? Very confused as she thinks she's pretty terrible. She has a really low opinion of herself. So, uh, the appropriate response would be, eh? I definitely don't think so. I think of all the people, Sakura would probably be the most surprised because she has the lowest opinion of herself. So seeing a bunch of demi servants using her form would be really weird for her because she's like, uh, really? Of all the forms in the universe, this works? And a bit confused. By the proportions? Well, they are parts of her, right? They're parts of Bibi who's based on her, and they just 
maximize one of her assets. Yeah, Ilya's noticed that uh, that our right hand is on our left arm. She doesn't want us to do it. After all, we spent like three chapters being discouraged from doing this. Like the most loaded Chekhov's gun ever. Which means it has to be fired. It absolutely has to be when things get desperate. And we're definitely out of options considering the, the Berserker caught up to us and we're out of breath. Shiro is like one bad thing. Deciding to let people die so we can save Sakura. Debatable whether that's right or wrong, but um, by his standards, that's pretty evil. Abandoning your own ideals. No essays, no monologues, he just walks it. He's just like, I'm going. I'm going. No argument, just I'm going. I pat her head and walk away. I get away from Ilya. I'm going to attract his attention and fight him head on. I have to get away from Ilya so she doesn't get involved in the fight. I place my hand on the knot by my shoulder. The knot by my wrist is tight, so if I'm going to take the cloth off, it'll have to be from up here. I just need to pull it all off after that. Or confused by passion for Melt? Melt, probably. Or wait. Hmm. No, they kind of both represent parts of her. I think she'd kind of be okay with either of them, like... Uh, the sadism she can... I think... She would be confused. I'm going to answer it this way. I think she would be more confused by Meltralis's proportions. But I think she would understand her personality. And she might even understand it more than she understands Passionless personality. Which is the one she'll pro she'll be like slightly I mean, she won't like Meltralis's personality cuz she doesn't like that part of her, but I feel like that's what it'll be like. She'll be like, oh yeah, passion lip, okay, exaggerated these a little bit. Yeah, and then Meltralis, she's like, that's not my body type. What? Yeah, so I think she'll be a little bit more confused by Meltralis. Definitely Meltralis. Yeah, we'll go with Meltralis, now that I think more about it. But I think, I think passion lip's actually closer to Sakura. Uh, the way Sakura presents herself externally. I think Passion Lip's closer to that, so Melchalis is more like she, the way she is sometimes internally, but she tries to reject that. Summer Passion Lip, don't know. Don't know, and uh, uh, Passion Lip, okay, but I'm not a huge fan of Passion Lip. I'm also not a huge fan of my drama! Being interrupted. Alright, let's just pull it all up after that. Then I'll be assailed by pain that's ten times worse than all I've suffered until now. Just ten times worse than all this suffering. Kodomine says it's the switch of a time bomb. The fuse will be lit once I take it off. I don't know if it'll explode in the next minute or the next day. All I know is I can't put out the fire once it's lit. My mouth goes dry. Fear doesn't go away with determination. I want to scream out of sheer dread. Bobby sane or not. I'm scared of myself. My death is only natural. I'll be killed even if I stay here. If I'm going to die either way, I'll choose the method that'll keep me alive longer. So there's only one thing I'm scared of. And that's the possibility of losing my mind before my body dies. Will I be able to bear the pain? I might lose my sanity and forget about Ilya and Sakura. I might even forget the promise to protect them. That's what I'm scared of. That's the only thing I'm scared of, and that's why I sealed it. I know I can't use this arm even if my life's at stake. Berserker's appearance isn't somebody else's business. I'll be like him if I give in to the pain and lose my mind. No. The fear will always be with me so long as this arm exists. 
This arm is the embodiment of a nightmare that seeks to kill me. But why did I keep this arm in spite of that? And cut it off? There's only one reason. This arm exists to be used, and he entrusted me with it because it will be needed. He said I'll be judged by myself. Ilya said I haven't done anything bad. I like how Arch how right Archer is every time. He's like, you'll judge yourself, and that's what's going to happen. The atonement lies here. I betrayed myself and sacrificed many lives. There's something I can't give up, and that's why I continue to live. I put my hand on the red penalty. Live or die. I take a deep breath and rip the cloth. that instant, the world crumbles apart. Blowing despair. A strong wind that's going faster than a hundred meters per second. A fierce wind that doesn't allow the existence of living things, let alone one to stand up. Therefore, it's not a wind. It's steel and my body is crushed by the pressure. My eyeballs are squashed. My back sinks into the wall. I can't lift my hand or fingers. My blood flows backward. My mind is bleached white. There's no pain. Feeling pain and enduring it are too human-like to happen here. I'm melting. I can't even groan in protest. There's, there's nothing. I have no way to fight it off. I have to move forward, but I can't move a finger. I'm melting into whiteness. My body and mind impassively crumble apart. Go forward. Why am I here? Keep going forward. For what am I here? Go to the other side. Why am I fighting? Pass through the wind and move forward. I'm disappearing. My body lost already, but I clench my teeth, not letting my mind lose, but my mind is disappearing. I won't make it. I can't move no matter how hard I try. I can't stay no matter how determined I am. I try to clench my right fist with my whole existence on the line. If I can, I'll be able to hang in there. If I can move any part of my body, I can use that to move forward. I can't move a finger, let alone make a fist. My left eyeball is crushed. The rush of the wind ruptures my eardrums. My vision fades away within it. I see an unbelievable image. He's standing. He's standing in this wind. He's standing, walking to the other side. As if it's a matter of course. The wind of steel has no effect on him. He walks forward, his red coat billowing behind him. Strength is back in my jaws. I grit my teeth. My right hand is already in a fist. And we couldn't move two seconds ago. The red knight takes no notice of me. Set in a stern expression, his face is slightly turned away. Showing no interest in me as the wind rushes to engulf me. For him, this result was expected. Emi Ashiro cannot stand against this wind. He knew there's no future for the man who betrayed himself and wished for something out of his reach. He's right. The crimes I've accumulated will judge me. But he... And you keep up with me. As if to scorn me, as if to believe in me. He's waiting for me to get there. My vision fires up. I force as much heat as I can into my body. My limbs cut through the wind like a like giant swords. 
方こそついてきやがれ It's not. Can you keep up with me? You keep up with me. I pass the red figure with all my might. I step up onto the ground. The winds died down. There's about 30 meters to the black giant. It'll take him less than three seconds to close this distance. Therefore, the outcome of this battle will be decided in the next three seconds. My mind's clear. I know the scope of my power. Projection using creation concept. Basic structure. Composition. Production technique. Growth experience. And accumulated years. A reality marble that inverts the world engraved on your soul. The embodiment of the mental world using the theory of magic. The world egg. Inheritance of battle technique. Experience in physical strength from Archer. Correction. Failed to read physical strength. I'll still be killed in one blow. Reality marble. Unlimited blade works isn't usable. Archer's world and mine are different. I can't reproduce it. I can only reproduce what Emi Ashiro has learned or the noble phantasms he has recorded. If I'm to use a noble phantasm for my left arm, I have to search within unlimited blade works for the noble phantasm best suited for the situation and reproduce it. But be warned, projection is a two-edged sword. If you use it once, it will... <laughs> it's like, we're getting an internal internalized tutorial and he's just like, eh, fuck it. Fuck it, we don't need it. I hold my breath and put all my magical energy into my left arm. I only need to understand the weapons I can use. I already know the precautions. I have to move forward. Holy shit, what? Uh, can I go back? I put on- I was literally- I was literally putting pressure on the controls. Are you serious? I'm pissed at myself now. Alright, I'm actually gonna reset that and skip all the way back here. Give me one second. Holy shit. I was I was literally getting so so into this, I actually like put my full the full weight of my hand on the keyboard and skipped like 30 seconds. Okay. I'm I'm legitimately going to reset and scroll all the way through this. I'm legitimately going to re we didn't even save. We're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like, skip through like a few scenes. Uh yeah, exit. Oh no, wait. Uh, we're not doing shit like that. This might just straight up close the game. One second. Oh, actually, we can load. We'll straight up load all the way back at Einthorn Castle. Uh, is there a skip seed? Go to next. Action emotion, skip seed. To the forest. Skip scene. First half overload. Skip scene. There we go. There we go. Let's get going. Wow. I can't believe I did that. I need to I need to watch where my hand is go. My left hand? I usually rest it on the I usually rest it on my keyboard. Pretty safely. And that's twice now. I've completely lost concentration. And just been like just been like leaning forward in my chair, like, like, like usually that's not a problem. I've done like an entire playthrough without this being a problem. Okay, we're not at the tunnel yet. I know, right? It sucks being dragged out of it, but holy shit, that was good. Okay. I can just skip text until we get to where we're going, because it's not too far from here, right? We should get... There's the crater. Here's the dialogue. 
Here we go. Okay. Here we go, the argument. Oh! I might edit this for the VOD. I might edit it out of that for the VOD. Alright. And we're back in the wind. That brutal wind. And our desire to surpass that annoying guy in red. Screw him. Screw his superiority. His supposed superiority over you. We're gonna surpass him. <laughs> Why would I be so... Alright, we'll stop here. I step up onto the ground. The wind's died down. There's about 30 meters to the Black Giant. It'll take him less than three seconds to close this distance. Therefore, the outcome of this battle will be decided in the next three seconds. My mind's clear. I know the scope of my power. Projection using creation concept, basic structure, composition, production technique, growth experience, and accumulated years. A reality marvel that inverts the world engraved on your soul. The embodiment of the mental world using theory of magic, the world egg. Inheritance of battle technique, experience, and physical strength of Archer. Correction. Failed to read physical strength. I'll still be killed in one blow. Reality Marvel, Unlimited Blade Works isn't usable. Archer's world and mine are different. I can't reproduce it. I can only reproduce what Emi Ashiro has learned or the noble phantasms he has recorded. If I'm to use a noble phantasm for my left arm, I have to search within Unlimited Blade Works for the noble phantasm best suited for the situation and reproduce it. But be warned, projection is a two-edged sword. If you use it once, it will... Eh, yeah, fuck it. We don't need it. Don't need it. S tutorial skipping time. I hold my breath and put all my magical energy into my left arm. I only need to understand the weapons I can use. I already know the precautions. I have to move forward. I have to go beyond that wind and defeat myself. Not just one green line, all of the green lines. All of the green lines. I stare at it. I see through his giant sword. I open my left hand and grasp the imaginary handle of the weapon that is yet to exist. An extraordinary weight. Emi Ashiro cannot handle this giant sword. But my left arm will definitely reproduce the strength of my enemy. We made the sword breaks. A part of my brain explodes. My bones break, not being able to withstand the overflowing magical energy. It's unsightly, like apple skin. And since that's literally Archer's arm, that's why it's uh, slightly misproportioned and also the wrong skin color. Archer is heavily tanned and maybe unnaturally dark. Uh, not as dark as Emmy Alter, but definitely freaking dark. Darker than you'd expect from a tan. Here I come. There's no need to worry. The arm will reinforce the broken parts. I'll give my undivided attention to killing him for certain. He notices me. His hostility now has a focus. Recognizing my use of magic as a threat, his eyes move. But like ominous stars, the giant gives a death cry and runs to kill his enemy. Mad warrior. The giant is insane, but still the same. He's still fighting his battle against Saber. He's blind and insane. His life has ended twice over, and his body is rotting, but he's still fighting to protect Ilya. One second. The running giant won't stop with one blow, and normal projection is useless against him. Tracing won't do the trick. I can't beat that giant unless I use projection past my limits. Therefore, off. nine in my head. 
I use all 27 magic circuits in my head and smash it in one blow. Two seconds. He's right before me, his massive sword is upraised. Torrent in swirling vigor. He steps forward and I confront him by also stepping forward. Upper arm, collarbone, windpipe, temple, diaphragm, rib, testicles, and thigh. I take aim at the eight targets. I surpass the crashing speed of sound using god speed. He doesn't fall. His entire body has been torn through by his own weapon, but Berserker is still alive. I step forward. His weapon is in my left hand. I'm faster. I can land a finishing blow before Berserker who's missing an eighth of his body. I raise the giant sword up to his chest and thrust it like a lance. But I lost. I put all I had into it. I used every ounce of the unfair advantage I have, but it still wasn't enough. Berserker's attack draws near. It swung down with hurricane force. I twist my body. I use all my abilities to evade his attack. I saw it coming, so I can dodge it. Berserker's attack will only graze my head. That will still kill me instantly. Even a grazing blow from that monstrous blade will be the end. A direct hit can even destroy the ground. Even a brush with the tip of his sword will scatter my head like tofu. A giant sword comes crashing down. My vision freezes the instant my head is blown away. The, the sword's swung with blinding speed. Is stopped with blinding speed. The death blow never comes. The black giant is looking forward. Not at me who's under him. He's staring at the white girl who emerged from her cover. I pierce him. Without hesitation or mercy, I drive the giant sword into his heart. There's no counterattack. Berserker exhausts the last of his life force and crumbles to dust. For good this time. And at that moment, as his red eyes fade away, they remain focused on the girl, telling me to protect her. The battle ends in an instant. It really does end in one breath. The boy with trembling lips said he was going. He suppressed his fatigue and fear, put his hand on the red restraint, and walked away from the girl. She went out to stop him. She hesitated for a second, wondering what she could say. She couldn't come up with anything. Yet still followed after him. It wasn't even ten seconds. But that slight hesitation determined the outcome. She emerges following the boy. The battle has already ended. The giant who once protected her disappeared, his eyes fixed on her. Wind blows through the clearing as if signaling that the conflict has ended. The figure is all that's left in her vision. battle has ended. It's not the power of the heroic spirit's arm. Using his own power, the boy fought against his death and won. The girl keeps staring at his back. He will never turn around and look back again. He's released the shroud and defeated the giant. His figure looks heroic and powerful. There's no doubt left in him now. He cast away all agonies when he released the cloth and used projection. The girl keeps watching him filled with sorrow. His body looks like someone else's now. It's a foolish and sacred end with no return. Whew. 
Whew, what a scene. And what a sudden end, too. All right. With that, I'm afraid we're gonna have to end it here. Wow, what a what a scene. We've seen we saw we got to see the end of Berserker, and it's time for bed. Exactly. Exactly, Jacob. I hope you guys have been enjoying have been enjoying this as much as I have. Thanks so much for watching. We'll get back to this in a few days. Probably on Sunday. Tomorrow. We'll be back with some more Grand Order and probably some Battletech. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.